Hello everyone and welcome back to my KSP tutorial series in Kerbal Space Program 0.90 Beta. And so I'm continuing where I left off in career mode. Remember in this series I will be switching back and forth between sandbox and career mode. But for this beginning phase I'm going to be in career mode in order to uh, talk about the basics of space flight. And then we're going to get into more complicated things in sandbox as well. Uh, but for now we can stick to uh, career mode. And I've unlocked this technology, survivability, sounds like fun. Sounds like uh, it's essential and perhaps might help quite a lot. So with that, I'm going to go to the contract screen and see what contracts we can do in order to get the funds we need to launch further missions. These are the contracts available to us. Uh, visual surveys of Kerbin. I think I'm going to do those first. So visual surveys of Kerbin. These are new missions added in this version of the game, so should be interesting. And after that, I'm going to tackle orbiting Kerbin, but uh, we can only have two contracts at a time, so that's what I'm going to go for. All right, so let's go to the VAB and see what kind of rocket I can cook up to do those visual surveys. Here we are in the VAB, the Vehicle Assembly Building, and this was the rocket that we used in order to get into space in sort of a Mercury Redstone kind of way, which is a suborbital trajectory. We aren't going into orbit or even space this time, uh, so we have to rethink this whole thing. And we've got a lot of new parts. In particular, we've got these new LV-909 engines, and you can see they have a max thrust of 50, which means roughly they can carry uh, 5 tons, but that's uh, in gravity. You don't need a thrust weight ratio of 1 if that engine is not planning to get off the ground or fighting against uh, the gravity of the planet. If it's just in space, you can have any thrust weight ratio you want. And so you can use really tiny engines and really huge rockets if you're very patient. Of course, you're not going to be going accelerating very quickly like that. So, but we are going to be in the atmosphere, so I want to keep the thrust weight ratio above 1, which means the maximum we can do is add 5 tons to uh, put 5 tons on this. Uh, now the capsule itself uh, with its parachute is about 1 ton. So I'm going to add just a 2.25 ton tank there. So that's 3.25 plus the rocket is uh, 3.75. And then I'm going to want to make this thing land. A, well, hold on. We've got the parachute, right? The parachute uh, can't carry all of this all on its own, I don't think. I don't want to make it do that. Uh, so we can look at utility. We've got new parachutes, radio mount parachutes. So let's add two of those since they're radio mount. Now this is uh, symmetry mode and so we can have different kinds of symmetry. And I'm going to have two-way symmetry now. And this is to make it snap to angles. And I want it to snap to angles. You can see five degree increments. And so there we have Oh, a parachute blocking the hatch. That's not good. There we go. Well, that's pretty good. Though, you know what? Oh, we can't do... Oh, yes, we can. Okay. I was wondering whether we would be able to do this in this version uh, with the VAB not upgraded, but it looks like we can. That's pretty cool. Okay, so... One new feature of beta is that we can uh, do these offsets and rotates, which we weren't able to do in previous versions of KSP. So instead of having the parachute stick out like this, which is sort of unseemly, uh, well, that's too much. Okay, this is where angle snap needs to go off. Uh, we can sort of make them a little bit more flush to the surface of the vessel. And there, that, that looks better. I think that will be fine. Now, while we're at it, we can probably do some science. And we've got these goo containers that we have to investigate. Now, they're sticking out too, so I'm going to want to do the same thing. Okay, stop the angle snap now. That looks a little bit better. I think that's fine. Okay, now... Landing legs. This is getting a little bit heavy, actually. Yeah. Let's skip the landing legs. Uh, we've got uh, point, I mean, 4.05 with the parachutes and then another 
4.3 to that, so 4.35. So this right now is barely above the capacity of this rocket, so I'm going to stop that and let that be. Okay, so that will be our investigation pod. It's doing the surveys, what are they called? Yeah, visual surveys of Kerbin at these two locations at uh, in-flight above. Wow, we, we have to be above that height. Okay, that's going to be interesting. Now, that means we're going to need to be boosted up pretty high. So let's let's add our, our standard sort of booster thing. So that's, we're, we're calling that five tons, let's say. And then I'm going to add nine tons worth of fuel tanks. So that'll be 14 tons. So that's nine tons there. And we've got a 1.25 ton engine. So that's 15.25 tons, which is still under the capacity of this engine. Let's check staging. That engine goes there. So this decouples, that engine fires. And then the three parachutes uh, go off at the same time. Okay, I think we've got a very basic rocket. And we're going to call this uh, PS1 for Visual Survey 1. Let's try it out. It should be noted that we can't really build a rocket too much heavier than this because the launch pad can only take 18 tons. We'll have to get some funds to upgrade the launch pad before we can do much more than this. Now let's take a look at where our surveys are supposed to be done. We've got one way over here, and then we've got another one over here. Let's go with the one that's further east first since that's just our natural direction because uh, the planet is rotating in this direction we've already got some momentum in this direction uh, you can see our surface speed might be zero but our orbital speed is 174.6 that's because of the rotation of the planet and so we've already got that benefit going for us in terms of uh, going in this direction we would actually have to fight against that if you wanted to go in this direction okay and so while we're on the launch pad, I'm going to do a first mystery goo thing here. We got 1.8 science. I'm going to keep that. We are going to be retrieving it. We could transmit it using an antenna. I haven't put an antenna, but we could do that. Okay, so we're going for the first location, and that's relatively east, so we'll start pointing in that direction soon after we launch. Okay, uh, Jeb looks good. Let's go. Now, the atmosphere of Kerbin is a little bit weird, and it, it's, it bears mentioning. It's very thick and very, very large, com considering the size of Kerbin itself. And drag is calculated in a very peculiar way. A normal rocket will not take the trajectory that we are going to be taking. Our, our goal is to get well above the thicker part of the atmosphere first, and then sort of turn towards our target. Um, that wouldn't be necessary on Earth with a uh, vehicle with the thr thrust to weight ratio that this has. It would be able to start turning much quickly, much more quickly. Um, this this is okay. For, for a suborbital trajectory, we can probably start turning now. The key thing is to not deviate too much from your prograde vector. That would not be very efficient. You want sort of a parabolic arc. And just following the uh, keeping at the bottom end of the prograde vector will be sufficient for that. Now be careful, we need to get right around there, and we need to be at a sufficient height above it. So let's say above 20 kilometers. You'll hear people calling what I'm doing here a gravity turn if we were trying to get into orbit. But uh, a gravity turn is actually if you only make the initial deflection away from vertical and then let gravity do the rest. In that case, we would turn off SAS and just let gravity pull our rocket sideward to the horizontal. We are obviously not doing that. I am controlling, controlling our pitch quite uh, actively. Actually, yaw because of the orientation of our... Uh, spacecraft. The roll, yaw, and pitch. Yaw and pitch are just related by the way your 
uh, spacecraft is oriented. So if I rotate rolled my spacecraft now, now it's uh, it's going to be pitch that I'm controlling. So all you have to okay, well that's the end of that stage. Okay, let's see how far we've gotten. Not quite there yet. Okay, so I'm going to uh, I'm actually going to throttle down, decouple, and then I'll throttle up. You do not have to do that, but that's just by choice. And now I want to go a little bit further north. It looks like we are a little bit south here. So let me force that issue. So now I am deviating from prograde vector, and that's not efficient, but in this case, necessary. Uh, don't, probably not that necessary. Now, this is the highest that we're going to get. This is our apoapsis. That's the greatest altitude above the gravitating body whatever the gravitating body you happen to be around and so 40 kilometers we're at right now we need to be above 20 once we get there I think that'll be right uh, even with the drag in the atmosphere but we'll see we've got plenty of fuel here now that we're up here we should do a goo experiment okay in the upper atmosphere 5.4 science I'll keep that Jeb looks okay. I'm not entirely sure how this works because this is a new feature in this version of the game. I'm gonna turn retrograde here just because I would rather be pointing retrograde as we go down but I might have to change that if we're not hitting the altitude properly. It says crew report above that near the site. How close to the site do we... Oh, it says entering the site. Okay, let's do the crew report. Okay, uh, collecting survey data. Keep data. Okay, we fulfilled the contract. Excellent. Now, all of this is going to come back down. We might as well just... Uh, I don't know. How, what's our mass right now? That's important. Our mass is 3.58 tons. Do I think that the parachutes can bear that? Yes. Yes, I do. So I'm not going to burn extra fuel. I'm just going to carry the fuel down and we'll recover the fuel as well. The fuel costs funds as well. This is a much more gentle re-entry. You can see not the high g-forces we had as we went straight up and down. Though we didn't really exit the atmosphere in this case. Okay, parachutes. Technically, I should wait longer to release the parachutes. You can release the parachutes under 24 kilometers or so, um, but technically the real spacecraft would probably wait until they're under Mach 1 and around 7,000 meters. Okay, full parachute deployment. We'll use physical time warp to get lower here. In general, I would say that 6 meters per second is safe. Much higher than that is not, so even this is sort of borderline. Okay, now as I recall we never did the EV report above water, so let's see now. EV report. Yes, keep the data. Let's just let's just go with that. Uh it says flying. Maybe I should nah I'll leave that for some other mission. Let's recover a vessel here. Okay, so here we are, 13.8 uh, science gained, parts, 87.7% recovered, a uh, fair amount of funds back, and no experience for poor Jeb. Ah, uh, that's sad. Okay, let's go to Research and Development Center. Okay, with our 35 science now, we can unlock more parts, and we can't go this way. Now, these are batteries, and you'll notice we do have an electric charge uh, resource. And that's not depleting very fast now, but as we try and do longer and longer missions, they, it will deplete and we will need the batteries, but for now we don't. This Science Junior, however, can give us more science, and so that would be helpful, but we can't unlock it right now. Maybe we should save up for it, because uh, I don't see needing these parts as much as I need science. Indeed, so I'm going to wait until... I get more science, unlock this as a priority, and perhaps this as well. This is our first probe part, which means we won't have to risk Kerbal lives if we've got that. However, 
if you're not risking Kerbal lives, they don't get experience. So that's uh, that's a trade-off. So maybe we want to uh, send Kerbals up there instead of probes. All right, so let's go to the mission control building to see what sort of contracts we can pick up. Now we've also got one more visual survey to perform, and we gotta keep that in mind. But we've also got some interesting part tests. This is a really simple one, testing it landed at Kerbin. I'll pick that one up. That's splashed down. The landed on Kerbin ones are a good ones, so let's uh, go with that quickly. To build this vessel, we still need a command pod because we need to be able to control it. But what we don't need is fuel. We need a fuel tank just for the show of things. But we don't need fuel. And all we need to do is ignite the engine on the launch pad. Let's go for it. Logically, even on the ground, rockets are tested with fuel. But, uh, well, uh, the game lets us get away with not doing that. So here we go. Let's, let's actually also, for safety's sake, keep the throttle down. Okay, contract fulfilled. Let's recover. And it's as simple as that. Let's not belabor the point. Let's do the other visual survey. I see no particular point in changing this craft. And I also don't see any point in changing the crew though. I don't know. We don't seem to be getting much experience with Jeb here. But, you know, I don't see why we would not pick our pilot to go up first. Uh, certainly we don't need an engineer. Maybe a scientist would be good. Maybe a scientist would be good. Would that be a bad idea because the craft will not have stability control though? That is not something I want to test right now. I'm going to have Jeb go up. Hopefully he'll get some experience from it. I don't know. But let's try this visual survey. Okay, here we go. SAS on, throttle up. But let's make sure we target the place. Activate navigation. Now, looking at it, we should probably head at 315 degrees roughly. Now you can calculate launch azimuth is the actual launch angle that you're going at. That's the term for it. And there is a calculation for it based on the rotation of the planet and such things like that. But uh, roughly speaking, what we would expect is that we want to launch at 315 degrees. Uh, you can see uh, 0 north is up here, 90, 180, 270. Okay? So that is our plan and we will do that without laborious calculation and in fact it's got the little marker there I can sort of see it hiding on the corner there and that is the marker for the target alright Jeb looks okay here we go now I don't think we did a low atmosphere with the goo okay excellent 4.2 Again, same plan, trying to get to high first, get through the thicker part of the atmosphere. And it bears repeating, your burn is most efficient if you're pointing at the prograde vector, so if you're pointing away from the prograde vector, you should probably have a very good reason for that. One reason is simply so that you can get to your target. Now our 315 is uh, well sort of working out for us as we expand our orbit, but not quite. And this is where the launch azimuth calculation actually comes into play. The reason why 315 didn't work for us is because of the rotation of the planet. And so we need to compensate for that and the best way to do that is just by actually calculating it out properly. But for now I'm just going to head a little bit further west. And see, what I'm doing by pointing west is dragging the prograde vector over to the side so it lines up with our target. We had, sw we had been on surface mode, now we're in orbit mode, and that is the difference. Okay. Probably a bit high right now. So I'm going to aim to retro burn as soon as we go over the target. Well, it said high high over the thing. We don't have to be 
below a certain altitude. We, it's okay as long as we're above a certain altitude. You can see that it's not particularly a precision matter to hit these things. Uh, there's quite a radius around them. Normally I'd want to be a little bit closer, but let's see what it says. I don't think it'll give us a we're too high thing when it just says above 17,000 meters. Does it seem like we're aimed for these mountains over here? That would be bad, wouldn't it? I definitely want to retro burn. I do not want to hit the mountains. Uh, it looks like we've passed the darn thing. Okay. Did I miss it? Well, I must have missed it. Okay, we can do some mystery goo while we're here. 4.2 science for that. So we missed the target for some... Where is it? It's like... Somewhere. Okay, we've got a little bit of a slope here, so I've got to be a little bit more cautious about the landing. So I'm reducing my speed to reduce the impact, and hopefully this thing won't roll around the place or anything like that. Oop. Okay. Good. Alright, that's fine. Now, all right, we've uh, done both goos, it looks like. We can do a crew report here. Yeah, sure, Highlands. Uh, didn't we hit that before? Uh, can we roll the craft? Not very well. So I'm not going to try and get him out because his hatch is on the bottom there. All right. Oh, well, we've still got physical time warp there. All right, let's recover vessel. Okay, well, we got a trivial amount of science, but I think I'll hold off on trying that again. Instead, I'm going to try to get to orbit. So we cover, recovered a little bit. Still no experience gain. Let's get Jeb into orbit so that he can gain some experience, shall we? Oh, need to pick up the contract first. Uh, orbit Kerbin. They give us uh, 8,858 credit advance, fund advance, and then completion is 35,000 with 18 science. So pick up that contract. Now we've got two contracts. Now let's go to VAB. So they gave us 8,000 advance and I think I'll keep this rocket as is. Well, you know what? Better to be safe than sorry. We can add one more, one more tank and that'll definitely get us into orbit. Okay, a little bit more cost, but not too bad. And uh, when you think about it, we're going to be turning this portion back to the planet and even at, in the worst case scenario I, I can't even imagine that we would get that far off but let's say we only get 50 percent of the value because we're so far away from the space center that it deducts all that uh, we'd still get about 2,500 back 2,800 and when you figure that out then that means that we'll probably be, be pretty close to that advance so we're not uh, cutting into our final reward reward here Okay, so this is actually, uh, well, this is the equivalent of a Mercury Atlas rocket, basically, sort of, kind of. Uh, but let's say uh, Orbital Spacecraft 1. Okay, let's go. And so we are here on launch day with Jebediah Kerman aiming to achieve orbit around the planet for the first time. Everything is ready to go, systems are a go. Jeb reports that he is ready to go and uh, feeling fine here. And we are T minus five, four, three, two, one, and lift off. Lift off of the OS one to low carbon orbit. Roll program. Up oh, the other way. So the reason I'm rolling the rocket there is to make sure that the the pitch program is the pitch program. In other words, I'm going to be using pitch to uh, point this thing down. And again, goal is to uh, keep it close to the prograde vector to maximize efficiency. Uh, our 
our target is to probably start turning between 120 150 meters per second depending on your thrust weight ratio depending on uh, we're, we're pretty close to one now with the thrust weight ratio we're at the capacity for the launch pad um, not quite the capacity for this capacity for this rocket but but close So right around here I'm going to start the turn. Just poking down here. And now if it was a gravity turn I would just turn SAS off and gravity would do the rest and that takes a bit of calculation to do that. I am not doing that so it's a pitch program of some sort. A pitch maneuver if you will. The distinguishing factor between just getting into space and getting into orbit is of course wrapping around the planet and for that you need horizontal velocity. You cannot just go straight up and straight down, well eventually you'll just escape the planet's grasp but that's not quite an orbit. So you want horizontal velocity in order to sort of wrap around the orbit and the goal is to get the spacecraft going horizontally so fast that gravity can't pull you down faster than the planet is curving away from you. So in fact uh, the planet is sort of, uh, well it's curved, right? It's a sphere. Uh, we are not going with flat earth society stuff here. And so with that sphere you are going to have the surface curving away from under you. Gravity will pull you down but not quickly enough. So what that means is at any given altitude there's a characteristic speed, characteristic velocity really, that you want to be going in in order to make sure you get into orbit. Whoop, whoop. Too maneuverable for me sometimes. And in this case we're aiming for about 2,300 meters per second. I never bothered to keep track of exactly what the number is for any given altitude around Kerbin, but around Earth you're talking about 7.8 meters per uh, 7.8 kilometers a second, 7,800 meters per second. So Earth is a lot harder to get into orbit around than than Kerbin is, and most of that is horizontal velocity. So you're not really talking about uh, going up very much. You're really go talking about going horizontal quite a lot. So you can see our orbit starting to form. You can sort of imagine a parabola going like this and as you go faster and faster the parabola is widening. So it's getting wider and wider. And again 70 kilometers is space so our maximum altitude is already in space here. We don't need it too much higher than that. Now I could just throttle down and do a constant burn until we're there. Most people playing KSP would probably just shut off the engine and coast to Apoapsis and do a slight burn there. So let me just go with that. So shut off the engine. Time warp a bit. We're relatively close to Apoapsis here. Don't know what the time is though because we haven't unlocked that in the tracking center. And I'm going to start burning. You notice I'm pointing a little bit down so that my Apoapsis does not go higher. Really don't need that. But it's a little bit inefficient to do this. There's a periapsis, which is our minimum altitude, and now it is above the surface. We need that above 70, and that's orbit. It's not a circular orbit, it's a slightly ellipt elliptical orbit, but that is sufficient. And I believe our contract should be fulfilled. Yes, it is. So now, Jebediah Kerman is the first Kerbal in this series to get into orbit. Now he can't EVA because we haven't unlocked that in the astronaut complex yet, but we can observe Mystery Goo and do 
a crew report. So, the goo seems to have clumped into a sphere. It also appears to have become brittle. Very important data about the goo. And a crew report. Oh, well, we've already done that. Okay. Yeah, because we did do the getting into space thing. All right. Now, getting him back close to the space center. What you want to do is there is a... Eh, Ideally, you launch in full daylight at uh, KSC, the Kerbal Space Center. And in that case, you would be able to see the peninsula here, which you can aim for. And my benchmark is dependent on what orbit I'm in. So the higher the orbit you are, the lower in the atmosphere you have to target in order to get back down. Roughly speaking, when you want to retroburn and get back down again, you want to be pointed at your retrograde vector on the opposite side of the planet from the KSC. But it's good to offset that just a little bit because the planet rotates. Remember, the planet rotates. So uh, over here is roughly where I'm aiming for. Maybe a little bit further. Altitude is now 70. Wow, that's actually pretty low. I don't need to be too far into the atmosphere to do this, I don't think. Uh, probably we're talking about maybe aiming for 40-ish. Because the drag from the atmosphere is going to hit me right away. Wow, yeah, I think I'm going to land short a KSC like this. Let's give it a go. V changes the type of camera you got, so this is free camera, which is better for this phase of the mission. You can see uh, our suborbital speed now is uh, 2268, going higher because we are going down. Ah, uh, the moon rising over the surface of Kerbin. Always a nice sight. By the way, if you want to know how to get to the moon quickly, this would have been the right time to burn. That just happens to be happenstance in the case of where uh, the moon is in relation to Kerbin. Uh, it would not be true of Earth's moon, for instance. But if you want to get to the moon, the right time to burn for the moon is to uh, burn right when it starts appearing over the horizon. And then you will... You will have the timing right. That will be the most efficient time to get there. That's a rule of thumb thing. We'll talk more about how to get to the moon properly, if you will, without using a rule of thumb in future episodes. Speaking of rules of thumb, another rule of thumb is that I generally like to hit the shore of our home continent at around 34 kilometers and you see that we are short now though it's tough to see we are over water right now it is getting to be nighttime but yeah the shore is still quite a ways away and we are too low so we're going to be west of the space center probably get about 80 percent of our full value back this is a very gentle re-entry. You can see the g-force is not building up too much because we're sort of skimming through the atmosphere. And that's generally, generally the way you want to go. Especially if you decide to use mods to actually add re-entry heat like deadly re-entry. Technically Jeb didn't actually complete one orbit, but that's a technicality. He was in orbit. Okay, parachute time. All right, parachute deployment. Let's get to the surface. We've still got a GUI experiment to do. Um, is there a different crew report that we haven't done here? Yeah, flying over Kerbin's water. Okay, that'll get us two extra signs there. Okay, so that's in the water, but we can do a GUI experiment. Yes, 2.4 science for that. 
and now we'll recover Jeb. Okay, with that we got 16.5 science, including what we got from the contract, uh, not including what we got from the contract, we have that separately. So we have 75, uh, 78 science in total, we got 89.4% of our value back in terms of the upper stage there. And uh, Jeb got a, a, a point of experience, an experience point gained, advanced to level 1, hopefully he can help us more with the whole piloting thing. Okay, we'll have to see how that works out. Let's turn to the tech tree. So in this episode, we got into orbit. We talked a little bit about how to get to orbit. And I'm going to unlock a new technology that will help us to do more things. Yeah, I'll go for this one. Okay, so, and we might as well get, uh, you know what? I don't need this antenna. I just need the battery pack and the science junior. I want to conserve funds as much as possible. So. We got to orbit, and I think I'll leave it there for this episode. In the next episode, I want to do sandbox. I want to go to sandbox, and I want to talk a bit about building planes because we're not going to get to the planes very quickly here. Uh, we'll still we'll need we'll definitely need these parts, but uh, you gotta make a pretty well. You you can make a pretty nifty little guy, a little plane with those, but we don't have landing gear, I believe. Yeah, the landing gear is all the way over here. So, I think I want to uh, do a little bit of diversion and talk about building planes in the next episode in Sandbox. And maybe I'll, within the episode, go back to career mode as well and uh, talk a little bit, uh, try a few more missions like the one that I failed on during this episode. Alright, so thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please do press like. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.